always from the heart of the city and now on demand 24 7 on the chfi website this is the soundtrack to accompany even more memory and i'm don jackson with lovers and other strangers around the world now on the internet and i'm not speaking of any upgrades to your computer memory a report in Slate magazine said, To attain the rank of Grand Master of Memory, you must be able to perform three seemingly superhuman feats. You have to memorize 1,000 digits in under an hour. The precise order of 10 shuffled decks of playing cards in the same amount of time. And one shuffled deck in less than two minutes. There are 36 grand masters of memory in the world. Unquote. And I'm certainly not one of them. This hour, even more memory with lovers and other strangers. From CHFI.com. Lovers and other strangers from CHFI.com and iTunes. Edwin McCain and I could not ask for more, and Gladys Knight, and neither one of us, wants to be the first to say goodbye. Gary Marcus in the New York Times wrote, and I quote, what we remember at any given moment depends heavily on the accidents off which bits of mental flotsam and jetsam happen to be active at that instant. Our mood, our environment, even our posture can all influence our delicate memories. To take but one example, studies suggest that if you learn a word while you happen to be slouching, you'll better be able to remember that word at a later time if you are slouching than if you happen to be standing upright. And it's not just humans. Cue-driven memory, with all its idiosyncrasies, has been found in just about every creature ever studied, from snails to flies, spiders, rats, and monkeys. As a product of evolution, it is what engineers might call a kludge, a system that is clumsy and inelegant, but a lot better than nothing. Unquote. Gary Marcus in the New York Times. Even more from memory this hour with lovers and other strangers from CHFI.com. Lovers and other strangers from CHFI.com. The Manhattans and Kiss and Say Goodbye. Josh Groban Awake and James Blunt. And you're beautiful. A memory that will no doubt be recalled every time that character in the song rides the subway. I ran across this interesting item in the social studies column of the April 20th, 07 edition of the Globe and Mail. And I quote, You'll never forget another wedding anniversary, writes Ian Taylor in BBC Focus magazine. In fact, you'll never forget anything ever again. That's because in the next few decades, you'll be able to store all your memories on a device which is small enough to wear around your neck. A bit like a, a personal black box recorder. The gadget will remember anything you keep in digital form. It might carry the footage your father took on the day you were born your electronic school reports, your health records, and your bank statements. A network of British scientists, Memories for Life, M4L, have spent the past two years swapping notes on the topic. This is all happening right now, says Professor Nigel Shadbolt, the M4L network's principal investigator. In 20 years, a device the size of a sugar cube 
will be able to store a lifetime of video images. Unquote. Consider the possibilities. Lovers and other strangers from CHFI.com. Jen Arden, Where No One Knows Me, and Amy Skye's Ordinary Miracles. Over the years, lovers and other strangers filled with memories. Now, making memories as well at CHFI.com. Art Buckwald, in a speech, and quoted in the Points to Ponder column of the January 2000 issue of the Reader's Digest, said... We seem to be going through a period of nostalgia, and everyone seems to think yesterday was better than today. I don't think it was. And I would advise you not to wait ten years before admitting today was great. If you're hung up on nostalgia, pretend today is yesterday, and just go out and have a time. Unquote. And Henry Mitchell in Memories magazine wrote, Nostalgia is the sweet halfway house by which you love the past and the sweet things in it without actually committing yourself to the nonsense that life was better than. Lovers and Other Strangers from CHFI.com Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. In concert, Sarah McLaughlin and I Will Remember You and the Eagles Remembering the Hotel California. Not necessarily the kind of fun or nostalgia that Art Buckwald was referring to. And here's something else to consider. Susan Tomes in The Guardian a few years back wrote, and I quote, I recently went to a party where our host regaled us with a compilation of concert recordings in which famous pianists had suffered from horrible memory lapses. Everyone fell about with laughter at the sound of celebrities going hideously off the rails. But as a pianist, I found it an uncomfortable experience. Playing from memory in public is a fairly recent fashion. Before the 19th century, playing without the score was often considered a sign of casualness, even of arrogance. In Beethoven's day, his pupil Carl Czerny apparently had such a phenomenal memory that as a teenager, he could play all his master's works by heart. But Beethoven disapproved, saying it would make him casual about detailed markings on the score. Chopin was angry when he heard that one of his pupils was intending to play him a nocturne from memory. Unquote. Sometimes memory isn't appreciated. Lovers and other strangers from CHFI.com Blue Rodeo with Bad Timing and Burton Cummings, and I will play a Rhapsody. And don't forget to read my blog and post your comments at chfi.com. The background music is from the bridges of Madison County. You'll remember the memories that Francesca had of her National Geographic photographer and how those memories were discovered and relived by her grown children in that novel and its powerful movie version. Finally, Jim Feibig, an author, was quoted as saying, if you can look back on your life with contentment, you have one of man's most precious gifts, a selective memory. Lovers and other strangers, from CHFI.com.
Good night. Sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson.